Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. I'm John and today we're going to take a look at the new Retro Flag Pi Station Raspberry Pi 4 case with a 4.3 inch LCD display. Let's get started. There are two versions of the Pi Station case. The one we'll be focusing on in this video is the one which includes a 4.3 inch 800 by 480 pixel LCD display. On the back of the box you have buttons for reset, power, volume, aspect ratio which includes 4 by 3 and 16 by 9 as well as brightness control. Aside from the LCD assembly the two cases are identical. If Retroflag at some point sells the LCD assembly separately you may be able to add it to a case that doesn't have the LCD. Now let's see what's in the box. First off we have our Pi Station, looks like some screws and screwdriver, and a manual. The manual is very well written, uh, it doesn't have a lot of text but it has some pretty good pictures that explain where things go. There are nine included screws and a screwdriver. Now let's take a look at the case itself. There are two USB 2.0 ports on the front. The hinges have a nice tension to it, it should be able to hold any position. On the far left you have the volume control. The middle button is for adjusting the aspect ratio and of course your brightness controls and two stereo speakers. Pressing the large button on the right will reveal a storage compartment for micro SD cards. Your joysticks or controllers will plug into the front two ports right here. I'll place some additional specifications in the lower right hand side if you want to check that out. Here's your USB-C power input, full size HDMI output, and an AV jack for connecting to headphones or external speakers. The two screws secure the LCD to the rest of the case. And there's a removable cover which provides access to the Ethernet port and the USB 3.0 ports. I'm going to go ahead and remove the display. And there's some threaded holes which make it very easy to reattach. Now I need to mention some of the things that are missing from this kit that you will most likely need. First off, a Raspberry Pi 4 is not included and will be needed. You might want to get a fan as well for extra cooling. You may want one or more micro SD cards with your gaming operating system installed. I picked up a pack of heat sinks, enough for five Raspberry Pi 4s, and that's what I had on hand. You will need a controller of some type, this is one I've had for quite a while. And lastly, you will need a USB-C power adapter at 5 volts, 3 amps, and you can also use a power bank, which I'll show you in a moment. To install the heat sinks, the smaller of the three goes right here on the USB controller, this one goes to the memory and the CPU. We'll go ahead and remove the backing to the heat sink and apply it to the USB controller and the memory and finally the CPU. There we go. That uh, looks pretty good. Well that one's a little crooked. There we go. Now that we have our heat sinks installed let's go ahead and open the case. When you receive it there's no screws installed. You simply pull it open and in the lower left there is a switch for the safe shutdown. I'm going to turn that on because I will install the safe shutdown scripts. Here's where the fan connects. Speaking of which let's go ahead and install it. To connect the fan, you take the black or negative line and go ahead and plug it into the far terminal and the red or positive terminal into the other one. And there is a silk screen indicator as to which one goes where. I'll go ahead and do a close up. There's the positive and there's the negative. The fan itself simply snaps into place like so. And now we'll plug in this connector into the GPIO pins and it can really only go one way and we'll do the same for the USB 2.0 ports. At this point it's simply a matter of lining up the holes and installing the black screws. There's three of them. I'm going to put one in the lower right and then one in the upper left and the last one in the upper right. The screw hole in the lower left is intentionally left blank. When we put the cover on we'll put a screw through there. Now you simply take the back cover and line it up then you want to take the six silver screws and go ahead and install that in all six holes. There we go. And it looks like everything's tightened down pretty good. Now we'll just attach the display to the back of the unit and it simply slides into place. And then once you do that, go ahead and tighten the two screws there in order to keep the display nice and secure to the back of the case. Pat yourself on the back, you are done with the assembly. Now you just pop in your micro SD card that has Botocera, Recall Box, or RetroPie. If you're not sure how to do that, 
I'll place a link down below to a guide that will show you how. Now I'll plug in the USB-C cable for the power and the USB cable to go into my game controller and open up the unit and go ahead and turn it on. At this point you'll see a red LED in the lower left and shortly after that the display will come on. Once the gaming operating system boots you'll simply press and hold a button to map the controller then step through pressing each of the buttons as indicated to set up your controller. Earlier I mentioned that we would install the safe shutdown script so if you go to this URL which I'll put a link down in the description below We'll simply copy this command, and you could type it in if you prefer. Just hook up a keyboard and type that command in. However, I'm going to use PuTTY. I did rename the host to PyStation, so I'm going to type that in and go ahead and connect over PuTTY, and then log in with Py, P-I, and the password Raspberry. And from there, I just right-click in the window and press Enter, and the scripts will be downloaded and installed on the Raspberry Pi 4 running RetroPie. Once the installation is complete, the machine will reboot. Now we'll test it out by hitting the power switch under RetroPie, and you can see that the machine safely shuts down. One thing I want to mention regarding RetroPie is that the text is very tiny on this 4.3 inch display. You may find it easier to see by connecting an external monitor to the HDMI port when setting up Wi-Fi. Next, let's take a quick look at the buttons on the front of the LCD panel. We'll start by adjusting the brightness level, and that works fine. Let's try the volume. Next we'll try adjusting the aspect ratio to 4x3 by pressing the middle button. Now we're in 4x3 and we'll switch back to 16x9. Well, that's a pretty nice feature. One of my early thoughts about this unit is that it would have been nice if it had a built-in battery. However, after thinking more about it, it makes sense that it doesn't. You can use an external battery pack to run the system, although it will need to output 5 volts and 3 amps. Let's briefly take a look at an arcade game called Galaxian and switch the aspect ratio to 4x3. When pressed once, it'll show you what the current aspect ratio is set to. Pressing again, we'll switch the aspect ratio to 4x3. And now the game looks much better. Since the Pi Station case looks similar to the PlayStation, it's only appropriate to show you what the display looks like playing a popular PS1 game, Tekken 3. A nice feature of the Pi Station case is that when you connect a TV or a monitor to the HDMI port on the back, it automatically switches the display from the case to the monitor. We'll take a brief look at some gameplay going through the HDMI port of Astro Smash on the Intellivision. And the same is true when you disconnect the HDMI cable, it switches to the internal LCD panel. Let's do a quick size comparison with some other popular cases. Here's the RetroFlag NesPi 4 case and the Argon 1 M.2 case. And for completeness, I did also test the case with the 8-bit Doe Bluetooth controller and it worked just fine. I hope you enjoyed this look at the RetroFlag Pi Station case. I think it's a slick design with a PlayStation look and feel. Having a built-in LCD display is a very nice and rather unique feature. I like that you have easy access to the USB 3.0 ports and Ethernet as well. If you like this case, remember you can also opt for the version without the LCD panel at a much cheaper price. Well that brings us to the end of another video. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button. If you want to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, I will talk to you very soon.